Hi, welcome to another episode of How to Do Atkins Low Carb. My name is, of course, Kent Haltena, and this week's episode comes out of a TV show I watched the other week. It's on the USA Network called Royal Panties. It's about a concierge doctor who works with rich people, and this particular person was having severe pain in his joints, and ends up being that he has gout. And the doctor on the show said, stay away from all those rich fatty foods that you're now eating now that you're rich, uh, and go back to your old lifestyle. And that got me to thinking, well, you know, what misconceptions are out there about rich fatty foods? And why was this potential person, even as he's scripted, uh, facing gout? Are we subject for gout if we're, if we're following a low-carb diet? Wanted to do more research. So let's go first. What is gout? You know, if you're like me, I really, before I started getting involved in the low-carb lifestyle, I never thought of what gout was. I had heard people having gout in the past, but, you know, other than it being painful, I really didn't understand what it was. And in the past, uh, British physician Alfred Garrett in the mid-19th century identified that uric acid was a causative agent for what got gout. As you built up uric acid within your blood system, your kidneys weren't able to um, prune it all out, it started cool, um, crystallizing into little spiny crystals. And it was described by um, an 18th century person, Sidney Smith, as like walking on one's eyeballs. It's so painful. It's also considered a form of arthritis, and the crystals can cause severe, severe pain attacks as and swelling. You'll oft, often see red, large, uh, puffy around the joints as the body attempts to attack the crystals with the white blood cells causing more and more uric acid to be produced. So the critics have said well the suggested correlation between a low-carb diet and an increased risk of gout seems obvious. Gout is caused by an excess of uric acid in the body, a diet comprised of foods rich in purines, i.e. meat, poultry, nuts, and eggs, are later broken down into uric acid in the body. According to the NIH, eating fewer than 130 grams of carbohydrates per day can lead to the buildup of ketones in the, in the blood, and ketosis can raise uric acids. So, is that an actual case, or is it not? Can ketosis and the food that you intake lead to an increase of the uric acid in the blood? And is the diet itself a main contributor towards gout attacks? So let's go back to the history. Well, one of the fathers of the low-carb lifestyle, William Bantings, with his letters on corp corpulence, has said, I have a strong feeling that gout and another terrible parasite upon humanity might be greatly relieved, if not cured entirely, by the proper natural diet and sincerely hope some person so afflicted may be induced to practice this harmless plant plan for three months, as I certainly would if the case were my own, to prove it, but not without advice. I just try it for three months and see if it betters you or not. So, with that said, let's take a look at some of the foods that are on the Atkins diet and see if the diet in itself is a very acidic diet. Well, as we've said in the past that uh, on every phase of the Atkins diet, are you suggested or encouraged or even recommended to eat vegetables? And many of the vegetables that you're eating on the Atkins diet are listed as very alkaline um, vegetables. Uh, extremely alkaline vegetables would be considered kelp or seaweed, alfalfa sprouts, avocado, celery, lettuce, peas, spinach, pe bell peppers, broccoli, cabbage, kale, and squash. All those are induction-friendly vegetables that are very alkaline in nature. Let's look at the other half of the diet. The suggestion is that the meat portion of the diet is very acidic. And if you look at the diet in terms of the, the meats that are encouraged, i.e. if you look at what beef, lamb, pork, and the other white meats of chicken and poultry are not extremely high acidic foods like salmon and tuna, those are considered medium purines or medium um, acidic foods. Beyond that, let's take a look at if one's diet can necessarily lead to gout happening within the body. And it goes to, it's very analogous to the cholesterol theorem. I.e., if you eat cholesterol within your 
diet, i.e. if you have a high red meat which has high uh, dietary cholesterol, it's going to lead to an increase in serum cholesterol, i.e. your lipids panel will be worse if you eat red meat and we've red meat than if you ate only uh, zero cholesterol foods. And we obviously know that's not the case because obviously ve um, vegetarians or vegans which are eating z um, little if no cholesterol can ultimately have high cholesterol. So let's take a look um, and it goes to uh, the actual evidence according to Gary Taubes has always been less compelling. A nearly vegetarian diet will only lead to a, approximately a 10% drop in uric acid levels as opposed to the what the an, analogy i.e. high purines, high uric acid, low purines, low uric acid would, would analogize to. And it goes, he goes on to say that there's little, little evidence that such diets reliably reduce the incidence of gouty attacks in those afflicted. Those purine-free diets are no longer prescribed for the treatment of gouts as gout specialist Irving Fox noted in 1984 because of their ineffectiveness and minor influence on uric acid levels. So let's take a look at why people may be seeing more incidence of gout in today's world as opposed to in the past. And by the 1990s, uh, Gerald Reven, among others, was reporting that insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia raised the uric acid levels, apparently by decreasing uric acid excretion by the kidneys, just as they raised the blood pressure by decreasing sodium excretion. So it is the increasing amount of insulin resistance due to the high uh, glucose in intake that's leading to the increased amount of gout within today's society. Reven wrote, the more insulin resistant an individual is, the higher the serum uric acid concentrations. These observations would suggest that anything that raised insulin levels would in turn raise uric acid levels and might cause gout, which would implicate that any high carbohydrate diet with sufficient calories. But this neglects the uniqueness of, of fructose within, the, within this equation. The second piece of evidence of the high incidence of gout occurring within the uh, community at large is noting that the high fructose corn syrup that is becoming more prevalent. In 2008, a uh, researcher in the British uh, Medical Journal noted that the soft drinks and fructose consumption increased the risk of gout in men. In a huge study of 46,000 health um, professionals in Canada, a survey was carried out and the fo they followed every four years for 12 years and over that time 755 people, men developed gout. And compared with the men who never drank a sugar sweetened soft drink, fewer than one a month, the frequent soft drink drinkers were significantly more likely to suffer gout. I, if you had more than two high fructose corn syrup drinks per day, you upped your risk of gout 85%. A single soft drink up increased your risk of gout 45%. And five or six uh, soft drinks per week up the risk by 29%. So you can obviously see that the risk of fructose and, and its impact upon the liver and, and the kidneys to release the uric acid is impacting the increase of gout which obviously demonstrates the fact that on a low carb diet which is decreasing the amount of fructose in one body should also ne necessarily decrease the risk and implications of gout happening for those low carb people. Well I'll put all the science and, and the links below so you can do the, your research yourself. I can understand where gout impacts a lot of people and that people are seeking a solution to what is an obvious painful situation. Having seen the photos in doing the research for this video, I can see where people are being debilitated by this disease. And I can only hope that people might take the idea of a low-carb approach to see some relief and see some benefit in their life. I hope this reaches everybody in good health. And make sure you watch my next video coming up because there's a giveaway at the end of it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.